the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem is something that I would almost expect you guys to already know. The sum of the squares of the legs of a right triangle equals the square of the hypotenuse. So I have a right triangle here. The hypotenuse is always the largest side, and typically we call it C. So the sum of the squares of two legs. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. There are many, many, many proofs of the Pythagorean theorem. In a later chapter, once we learn about area, we're going to see one of our precedence proofs of the Pythagorean theorem. For now, I'm going to prove it using stuff that we've already seen. And I'm not going to do this in a formal two-column proof. I'm going to do it more as an algebraic proof, justifying every step with algebra. So the first thing I do is I drop down my perpendicular, my altitude from the to the hypotenuse. And we know that the that altitude then splits into two pieces. Where those two pieces or where our legs of our right triangle are the geometric means. So our legs A is the geometric mean between the whole hypotenuse and the little piece that's adjacent to it, E. So I know A squared equals C times E. A similar equation I can set up is B, the other leg is the geometric mean between the whole hypotenuse and the piece that's adjacent to that leg, which is D. So B squared equals C times D. Now if I add those pieces together, so I have A squared, if I add those two equations together, plus B squared equals C times E plus C times D. I just added this equation and this equation together. Now look what happens. I already have part of it. I already have a squared plus b squared. I have a c in each one of those. So I'm going to factor that out. c, e, plus d. What's e plus d though? The segment length of e plus the segment length of d is equal to c. e plus d is equal to the whole hypotenuse, which is c. C times C is C squared. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. One thing I want to highlight, this is only for right triangles. Please make sure you realize this. This is only for right triangles. I'm actually going to do something later on in the chapter with you guys where we solve non-right triangles. So our first example, solve for x. So the hypotenuse squared, x plus 1 squared, is equal to the sum of the two legs squared, x squared plus 5 squared. x plus 1 squared, square the first term. 1 times x times 2, squaring 5, that's 25. If I subtract x squared from both sides, the x squareds go away. So I have 2x plus 1 equals 25. If I subtract 1 from both sides, x is going to be equal to 12. Solving for x in this one. Interesting. Think about this one. I have two right angles. It's a trapezoid, and I need to find one side of the trapezoid. From a point, I can draw a perpendicular to any line segment. So that's going to be equal to x. This piece here is 6. This is now a rectangle. So that piece there is 6. The whole segment is 10, leaving that to be 4. So 12 squared is equal to x squared plus 4 squared. 
12 squared, 144, is equal to x squared plus 16. Subtracting 16 from both sides, I get 128. Now I need to square root both sides. Again, we're talking about length, so we don't worry about the plus and minus. The square root of 128 simplifies into 8 root 2. The last example, a rectangle is 2 centimeters longer than it is wide. The diagonal of the rectangle is 10 centimeters long. Find the perimeter of the rectangle. So I have a rectangle. The rectangle is 2 centimeters longer than it is wide. So that's x. That's x plus 2. The diagonal is 10. Again, I have a right triangle happening there. So 10 squared is equal to x squared plus x plus 2 squared. 100 is equal to x squared plus x squared plus 4x plus 4. So then I get 100 equals 2x squared plus 4x plus 4. I get one side to be 0, so I subtract the 100 over. Notice you have a common factor that's going to make your life easier to factor. Factor out the 2. Now I need two factors that are going to multiply to be 48, but add to be a positive 2. So two numbers that are close to each other, because they have to be opposite signs since the last term is negative. So I have x plus 8, x minus 6, x can equal negative 8, or positive 6. Now if it's negative 8, I'm going to have negative side lengths. So our only possibility is 6 for x. Now, I just looked up and I made sure that I was answering the question. Find the perimeter of the rectangle. I just found x. Don't just stop there. So we found x. We found that this side is 6. This side is 6. Therefore, this side is 8. This side is 8. I have 16 plus 12, which is going to be 28. Double check. That you don't need that you need units, and we do twenty eight centimeters. There are your lesson questions for the day.